And so William opened his notes in the Krygar and told his yarn of the six diamond heads. Kanaka, Dufan the portly, Zoon the cruel, Kisu the blade, Utruga the thief, and Rafai the giant. Rafai was the largest egg in the nest and never looked back, being massive in size for a frog at least. He bullied his way up the ranks until he became lieutenant to one of the six captains of the diamond heads. During the slaughter of Basuk, he saw an opportunity to advance and took it, impaling his captain through the back with his trident, he blamed it on an elven farmer's pitchfork. After the slaughter, he was named sole captain of the Diamond Heads, as it seemed all the other captains had dispersed. Three of the captains' turn was up. They decided to retire. The other two deserted during the slaughter. Dufon, the Fi truly despised and hoped one day he could hoist his head on a pike. Kanaka, on the other hand, Rafai still sleeps in fear of his cold, reptilian eyes. Rafai has made a reputation of being a true beast of battle, even that a shorn give him a wide berth in the camps. Perhaps one day he might even hold rank of colonel. If he keeps fighting the way he does, this will surely be sooner rather than later. Last seen, he was helping the High Elves Draconia in the east with goblin raids. Betruger the Thief was nothing but Rafai. Betruger always had an eye for shiny things, whether they were hers or not. Being the smallest of the captains, Rafai always wondered how she made it to her station. The answer is simple. Nobody in the Krager had hands like Betruger. Most that knew her always checked their pockets after every meeting. She backed this up with her daggers, which she was most accurate with. After the slaughter of Basuk, her time with the Krager had expired, and she bid the group good riddance. She moved north to Yerkusk, where she resides now. Here, Betruger has truly come into her own, amassing a large crime syndicate simply known in hush whispers as the Red Claws. With trade starting to flourish again now that the war is over, Bedruger is looking to expand past the borders of Yerkusk, her sights, in fact, in the whole world. Kasu the Blade. Kasu loves knives. Big knives, little knives. Does not matter. He's an expert with all of them. If you were to ask him what his favorite knives were, he would pull out his two kukras, Pony and Boss. These two blades helped him become a captain in the Krager after all. When his time had expired in the Krager, he traveled the world studying from the grandmasters of both knife making and wielding. His passion has become somewhat of a prophet. Never one of mouse, he has becomes something of a performer, showing off his skills for coin. He even performed for the Emperor of Rome. Last anyone has heard of him, he was traveling to Amaranthia to perform for the king, with recommendations from the Emperor, of course. The Bruce took a sip of his whiskey and grimaced, more with the notes in front of him than the bitter taste of the strong spirits. <clears throat> Zoon the Cruel. Zoon was forced to retire from the Krager. The reason why was because he did his job too well. Honestly, it was because he gave even mercenaries a bad name. While well, Rafai was a ruffian, to be sure, he did back it up with useful prowess on the battlefield. Most, in fact, would not call Rafai a bully, but an intimidator. While tough, he was usually fair with his underlings. Zune, on the other hand, was not. He straight up enjoyed tormenting anybody around him. Everywhere he travels, he brings pain to those smaller and weaker. When he was retired, he cursed the Krieger and headed west of Basok, to the land of Ruskia. Here he found a people that were just as cruel as he was. The problem was, they were far better at it. Last that was heard of Zun was that he had been made a slave in Moscow to the high priestess of Mistrike. For the bitterness that he dealt to others served upon himself. He has grown truly bitter with the world and seeks vengeance upon all who have slighted him. Glancing up at the angry elf in front of him, the Bruce sighed and continued on with the next captain. Dufan the Portly. Dufan was a tactician of the Diamond Heads. He always had a head on his shoulders and loved to feed it with knowledge. Books, scrolls, anything written, Dufan would devour it with gusto. Unfortunately, he gobbled up anything else, food-wise. Pies, cheesecake, cake, cheese. Yes, he would eat anything he could get his claws on. 
Dufan was a glutton for both knowledge and food. One served him well, the other served him with scorn. The scorn he could live with, because his knowledge tended to allow him the grace to continue eating. Most of his time with the Diamond Heads, he was the one who drew up the battle plans, or was sent as an emissary to whomever they were struggling against. He was on his way back from such an ambassadorship when he was immediately called to lead his troops into battle. Unusual it was, but he was unconcerned, as it happened before. His brain always led his troops to victory, yet when the battle commenced, he was horrified to find that they were not fighting anyone, merely butchering elven farmers. With a slaughter well underway, Dufan did the only thing he could think to do, run away. He fled through the forests, hiding and surviving on only maggots and berries. He was a deserter, and rightly feared the Krygar's justice. He hid for the longest time until he realized that none of his fellow Mahi were in the realm of Sherwood. Stricken with grief for what he had done, and being there, he has done nothing but put his knowledge to the use of Sherwood. Knowing the king of the Wood Elves, he confided in him and put himself to work, strengthening the army, economy, as well as what little art agriculture Sherwood has. He has slowly begun to know peace, his guilt ebbed by the good he has done, as well as the simple fact that there was nothing he could have done. In Sherwood, he has truly found a home. At this point, the bard closed the book, glancing around the bar to make sure nobody else was listening. He gave this stern warning to the elf in a hushed whisper. Kanaka, the last captain, is a thing of nightmares. Unless he was standing right in front of you speaking, chances you wouldn't even know he was in the room. How he became to be part of the Krieger is beyond most. Some say he was the only pupil of Makaya, the great Falk assassin, although that might have been a myth. During the slaughter of Basulk, he simply vanished, never to be seen again. The Krieger tried to find him, which was unwise. Those that hunted him have never been seen again. They gave up, and now his name is simply uttered in fearful whispers. Some say he contracts out murders to the highest bidder. Others say he is contracted by the League of Assassins. He moves through the shadows unseen. Most who try to find this master assassin end up holding their intestines, looking in horror at two rows of razor-sharp teeth curled into a cruel smile. Before they pass on, Terra grips them an end, seeing those reptilian red eyes, until they fade into nothing.